So far in this section of the course, all of the probability distributions that we've been creating were one-dimensional. They were based on one variable. In this video, you are going to see how to extend the probability distribution to two-dimensional. So this is called a joint probability distribution. It's when you are looking at data distributions over two separate variables. And along the way, in this video, you're also going to learn a little bit more about Seaborn and a bit more about pandas, including importing data, in this case text data, so CSV or comma separated values data, from the disk into Python using pandas. So let's jump immediately into Python. We are going to be using NumPy, Matplotlib, and Seaborn, and in the exercises we will also get to using pandas. So what I'm going to do is start by creating a two-dimensional distribution. So I'm going to do that by creating two sets of variables, or two variables of random numbers. So let's set the first one to be just random numbers, Gaussian distributed. And then on the y-axis, I'm actually going to set this to be very similar, except this is going to be x squared. So here we have our variable x and our variable y. And now the question is, what is the joint probability distribution of x and y? So what is the probability that a given data point will have some value within some range in x and also in y? So to examine this, we are going to plot a two-dimensional histogram, so hist2d. So that's x comma y, and then I will specify the number of bins to be 30. So let's see, and then I'm going to put an x-axis label. So the x-axis label is going to be x, so that's actually just the function x. And then the y-axis label is going to be x squared. So I'll use a little bit of LaTeX coding here. So x caret 2. And let's see what this thing looks like. So here we have our two-dimensional distribution. And actually, it's really dominated by these small values here. So I'm going to add another optional input to hist2d, and that is vmax for the maximum color. And let's set it to 10, for example. So this is starting to look better. So how do you interpret this plot? Well, this is very similar to the histograms that we've been looking at before. The main difference is that we have a separate histogram for each variable. So you can see the distribution over x and the distribution over x squared. Now, of course, all these values are positive here, or at least non-negative, because there is no value for x squared that can possibly be negative. And as you saw a couple videos ago when we created probability distributions of those mathematical functions, x squared has a large concentration of values towards zero. So in this case, that's going to be on the bottom. Now, you'll remember when we were looking at the histogram of data just for x squared, that plot looked something like this. It had this kind of exponential decay indicating that most values were small, close to zero. And that's what you see going along the y-axis here. Now, the thing is that there's actually three distributions that you can extract from this plot. There's the distributions over the x-axis, the distributions over the y-axis, and the joint distribution, which is what you were looking at here. So we can actually make this plot be a little clearer. We can make this be more interpretable by also plotting what's called the marginal distribution. So that would be the distributions when ignoring one of the dimensions. And to do that, I'm going to switch to Seaborn. So I'm going to write SNS for Seaborn dot joint plot. And let's make a joint plot of x comma y and plt dot show. And let's see what this looks like. So what are we looking at here? So each of these dots shows a data point on the x-axis and on the y-axis. And what you see here on the side and on top is the distribution is called the marginal distributions over the two dimensions. So this up here is the distribution over x, which is the, the function x. So this would be the distribution completely ignoring variable y. 
And here on the side, you see the distribution of y completely ignoring x or marginal over x. Okay, so now I wanna spend a moment making this plot look a little bit nicer. So the first thing that I'm going to do is activate the Seaborn visualization uh, parameters with sns.set. So now you see it looks a little different. It's the same data, of course, but the histogram looks different here and you get this, you know, this sort of white grid here. It looks a little bit nicer. So this is a scatter plot because we see all the individual dots. And if we look at the doc string or the help file for sns.jointplot, you can see that there's a couple of different kinds of plots that we can generate. So for example, we can have reg, which stands for regression, it'll plot a regression line. And there's a couple of different options and KDE and hex. So I'm gonna show you these three. So reg, KDE and hex. So let's start with reg. So I'm gonna say kind equals reg, again, that stands for regression. And what Seaborn is actually doing is computing the regression line between X and Y and plotting that regression line along with some uncertainty measure. Now, in this particular case, for this example, there isn't actually an interesting linear relationship between X and Y. And so the regression line, in fact, doesn't really make sense for this particular data set, but I just wanted to illustrate it to you. So then we have KDE. And this one draws a kernel density estimation. So you see, instead of seeing all the individual dots, you see these ISO contours indicating the density of the plots in different areas or the data in different areas. And that also changed the histogram to be a kernel density estimation. So it's a little bit smoother, but it's still fundamentally the same data that's shown before. Okay, and then scatter. Uh, but that is actually the default if you don't type anything. I would also like to change the color of these. So I'm gonna add another optional input here to say color equals, and I'll specify RGB. I like to have a bit of red, not so much green, and quite a bit of blue. That makes for a very nice color, I think. Now, what would you do if you wanted to have a scatter plot and a kernel density estimation? Let's say you wanted both of these because you think that each of them looks nice. So in Seaborn, you can add a method to the SNS joint plot function that's called plot underscore joint. And here I'm going to specify SNS.KDE plot. So now this is going to produce a kernel density estimation plot that gets plotted on top of the plot that's already here. And so now you see all the individual data points as a scatter plot, and you see the density estimation on top. And I think the last thing I will do is add the X and Y labels. So let me go up here, copy and paste. And there you go. So now this graph and this graph show fundamentally the same thing. It's the same data. However, I think you agree that this is not only a little bit nicer to look at, it's also a little bit more informative in particular because we have the overlay of the individual data points with the kernel density, and we have these marginal histograms on top and on the side. The exercise for this video has three parts. So first of all, you want to import this file called data.csv. This data comes along in the zip file where you download all the code for this section of the course. So import this data file, and you can import using Python or using pandas. I recommend pandas. It's actually a little bit easier to read in a CSV file in pandas compared to just in like raw Python. And then you wanna show a joint distribution, a joint probability distribution along with the marginals so that's very similar to what we just did in, the, in Python a few moments ago. And then you will see when you look at these data, there's gonna be some clusters. And then basically you just want to look at the plot and interpret the number of clusters that are in the data. And this is just by visual inspection. We're not gonna be applying any machine learning techniques or categorization or clustering algorithms. So just based on your visual inspection, determine the number of spatial clusters that are present in the data. Now, I'm going to give you a hint for importing this data file. 
So if you don't want the hint, if you want to figure it out on your own, then now is your last chance to pause the video because here comes the hint. So the hint is to use pdpendas.readcsv. All right, so now you can pause the video. And uh, now I'm going to switch to Python and show you my solution. So let's start with a new cell down here. I'm going to import the data, let's call it data. So this is going to be pd.readcsv, csv. Again, this is the way to import a CSV file in pandas. You can also do it in raw Python. It requires several extra lines of code, but if that was your preferred solution, then of course that's totally fine. So let's see, the data file is called data.csv. And let's just immediately take a look at what this data set looks like. Okay, so there's already a problem here, and I hope that you figured out what this problem is. So the real data is, it looks basically like this. So we have uh, two columns of data. However, there are not actually 74 rows. In fact, there are 75 rows of data. This is the first row of data. And this function by default, or erroneously I should say, considered the first row in the data file to be the labels for the two columns. So pandas interpreted this first column to have this label and the second column to have this label, which means we're actually losing one row in the data. So let's see. So therefore we can write header equals none. And now we get just default headered names of zero and one. And I am going to specify that the names will be called X and Y. Okay, now if you tried to run this and you get an error about the file not being found or Python was unable to locate the file, then it's probably the case that you were just in the wrong file. So if you look at the address bar up here, you will see the name of the folder where you are living on your computer or on the server if you're working on Python online. So as long as this file is in this folder, then it should be readable. All right, so now we've successfully read in these data. And now I'm just going to make a plot. So sns.jointplot. And now we have to specify the columns in data that we want to draw the plot of. So it's going to be data x, and we call this like a dictionary, data y. And uh, let's actually just draw it like this and see how it looks. And I'll get rid of this here. Okay, so already this is pretty interesting. You can see all these dots and it's pretty clear that there are three clusters, one, two, three clusters. So that's kind of the end of this assignment. I'd want to spend a few moments making this look a little bit nicer. So instead of this being a scatter plot on its own, I'm going to say kind equals KDE. So I'm going to make this a kernel density estimation. So there you see the histograms, the marginal distributions, and you see the ISO contours showing where the clusters of the data are. Now this is already pretty interesting from a machine learning perspective because when you look at the marginal histograms, you don't actually see that there are three separate clusters in this data set. So if I gave you these data and you just looked at histograms of X and Y and you didn't actually look at the plot of the data X by Y, so this joint probability distribution, you would actually most likely misinterpret the data. You would probably come to the wrong conclusion about the data. And that is an example of the importance of visualizing data as much as possible. Okay, so there's a couple more things I wanna do here. I wanna show you the another optional input called levels, and that shows, uh, or that controls the number of ISO contours. So for example, if I would write levels equals two, then you can see that we just get two ISO contours. So let's see, two is definitely too small. We can also do 20. I'm sure that's going to be, oh, it doesn't look so bad actually, but I think probably somewhere around five is a pretty good range. I think that's pretty reasonable. Okay, but now I also want to see all the individual points. So I'm going to write plot underscore joint and then sns.scatterplot. So 
This is kind of the opposite of what I did up here where I first drew the scatter plot and then put the kernel density estimation on top. Here I'm going to draw the kernel density estimation and then the scatter plot on top, so the dots on top of that. And I think this looks pretty nice, so I'm going to call this the successful completion of this exercise. In this video, you learned how to create and interpret two-dimensional histograms, which can be normalized to probability distributions. And you also learned more about creating nice-looking plots in Seaborn and importing data from the disk using Pandas.